Hello, this is cycle two, week 13 science. We are doing experiment 162 in Van Cleve's book, Humming Glass. This is a good demonstration of uh, physical properties, the physical properties of the glass. It's primarily a demonstration of uh, sound and some of the different properties uh, of sound. So there are a lot of opportunities uh, for you to, to talk about how sound waves are very much like ocean waves or water waves that the children would have a good experience with. It's, it's also true that light has wave-like properties. Those are much more difficult for us to see, um, and it's certainly beyond the scope of what we're doing here today, but especially for the advanced students, it, it might be worth pointing that out. Uh, and any kids who are interested could easily do a, a little paragraph or a small paper about the wave-particle duality of light and talk about diffraction experiments and um, small little slit experiments and things like that. So there's a lot here, and this is a good experiment to open the door to the discussion of, of waves uh, and their properties um, in general. We'll get to the actual demonstration in just a second, but let's, let's review some of the basic properties uh, of waves. Here with this sketch, I've shown two different waves, a black wave and a purple wave. Um, you could easily create uh, something like this, um, and may have um, in the experiment 161. Uh, but the, the vocabulary that you want to talk about for waves are things like amplitude, frequency, um, uh, the, the displacement of the, the peaks uh, and the troughs. So the amplitude is the displacement from the zero line, from the zero line to the peak, or from the zero line to the, the trough. That's, that's the, uh, the, the displacement, that's the amplitude of the purple wave. So we see the amplitude of the, the black wave is much bigger than the amplitude of the purple wave. Right? But we actually see that they have the same frequency. The frequency of the wave is the time period uh, required for each wave to complete one cycle of, of peak and trough. And so in this case, the two waves have different amplitudes, but they have the same frequency. Uh, some good vocabulary uh, that you can highlight and you can remind your students about. Then in our demonstration today, this is um, experiment 162, humming glass. So the purpose of our experiment is to show that we can make noise with glass. Uh, it's kind of obvious in some ways, but we want to make a very specific kind of noise. And we want to talk about how the noise is made. So, uh, so first the demonstration. I have here one of our uh, regular drinking glasses. The thinner this glass is, I think the better this experiment will work. Um, I had a little bit of a hard time fine-tuning it uh, and getting it to work as well as I want. Um, another thing that's important to do is to clean the rim of the glass. Now, I know all of the glasses that come out of the cabinets of everyone's uh, home are clean, but you want it to be extra, extra clean. So what I would do is I would take your glass and I would wash with, with fresh soap and water, the, especially the rim and the top portion. I would also, also wash the hand, the finger in particular, that you're going to use in the demonstration uh, to do it. So in order to do this experiment then, there are, there are two, two ways to make this work. You, you hold the bottom of the glass with, with one hand. I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna hold it with my left hand. And now we wanna move our finger in a circular pattern around the rim and we wanna listen. It's very faint, I hear a little bit of sound. You may not hear anything. I have here a small bowl of a magical liquid. No, I'm just kidding. Of uh, vinegar. Right? Uh, this is just a commercially available, you know, store-bought vinegar. Um, vinegar is about 5%. Vinegar like this that you buy in a grocery store is about 5% acetic acid. So what I'm going to do now is dip my finger. Get a little bit of that vinegar on there. This here. sound is much better. There. Oh. <laughs> there. So what's going on? Would water work as well as vinegar? Uh, it might, and, and in fact, I think I, I've seen this kind of a demonstration done with water before, but we're using vinegar for a specific reason that Van Cleve mentions. Uh, the vinegar is being used for the same reason that we cleaned the edge of the glass. Um, and and so, so let me tie, try to tie all this together. Um, the vinegar is used because it is 5% acetic acid, and so we're cleaning the glass to remove any residual dirt and grime. We're washing our hand to remove oil from the hand, anything like that. But, but our skin is naturally secreting oil all the time. 
So by dipping our finger in a little bit of vinegar, we can help to dissolve just a little bit of oil that is on the finger that we haven't gotten rid of yet, that either by cleaning or because it's been so long since we washed our hand, more has already been excreted. And then finally that vinegar, that acetic acid is, is very effective at dissolving anything that's on top of that rim that we just haven't gotten cleaned yet. And so it's a little extra clean. Water would certainly work because the, the lubrication helps, but you don't want too much lubrication because now, well, what are we doing? We're, we're making that sound by vibrating the glass molecules. So it's the friction of our finger going around the rim that's, that's causing the, the molecules on the surface of this glass to, to, to move slightly. And they don't move very much at all. But as they move, and as we go around and again and again, again and again, that they move more and, and the sound uh, is produced. And so it's a very high-pitched sound to, um, because of the frequency of, of the waves. Uh, that we're generating. And the waves are being generated again by the friction uh, as we're going around uh, on the rim. So that, that's the experiment. Then um, in order to do this in class, now you have a lot of different options. And I really like this experiment because uh, it illustrates a really practical point, especially for your more advanced kids about doing science and about doing science demonstrations and about doing science experiments. And that is you have to very carefully control all of the different pieces as much as you can. Some things are always outside of our control. But sometimes you can have what appears to be a negative result where I started, right? It looks like I can't make the glass vibrate at all. Does it have something to do with the glass? No. Is it the thickness of the glass? No. What is it? It's something almost completely extraneous to the system. It's the little residual oil. It's the little residual dirt. But we have to get rid of those things. We have to control them so we can actually make the demonstration work. And that's an important point, and scientists spend a great deal of time doing real science, thinking about all those kinds of extraneous things that may be impacting what's going on, to bring them under control, to be sure that we're seeing yes or no, can we really make the, vi the glass vibrate and produce the sound? And so it's a great illustration, and especially, again, the more advanced kids, something they could really, I think, seek their teeth into uh, and might enjoy. This is a fun experiment you could set up um, different groups of kids, have one kids one set maybe wash their, their hands to start, have one not, see, see how much success they have. Um, I mean, if you drag your finger enough, you can make a very low-pitched sound, um, even with an unclean glass, but see, it's made it. But, the, but that nice, clear, high-pitched sound only comes, only comes when you're doing the experiment in that way. And so you can kind of set it up and, and let the students explore it and build uh, with that. I think that would be uh, a, a fun option. And this is definitely something everyone can do in class. Um, as always, use your best judgment about your kids and their maturity and be safe. You don't want anybody splashing vinegar in their eyes. You don't want anybody sticking their finger in their eye, <laughs> period, but especially one that has vinegar on it. You want everybody to, to, to clean up um, after you're done. But this is a fun experiment, um, uh, and I think the kids will enjoy it. This is Cycle 2, Week 13, Experiment 162, Humming Glass.